Wow, it's an amazingly bright light. Wonderful to see you all here today. I actually, when I was thinking about this talk, I, um, I was thinking about the word brave. And I couldn't help getting away from this image of, you know, firefighters, you know, leaping into burning buildings and rescuing babies. And they are brave to me. Maybe I now know that they are the physically brave to Thomas's talk. Um, and, um, and I thought that was quite intimidating because I'm not sure I'm that brave, to be honest. Um, and also, but then thinking about it, I do think that, and I actually thought about renaming my talk and thinking about whether we could actually hack bravery. Because I do believe that there are things we can do in our everyday that actually allow us to be more brave. But let me just take a step back and tell you a little bit about who I am. So I'm Finnish. And some of you might know of us. We are a small population of about 5 million people. Uh, we are also known to be quite reserved and shy. And we also have very unique Finnish problems. Like, you know, you live in a, in a flat and you, try and you need to leave to go to work, but your neighbor is in the hallway. <laughs> really difficult, you know? <laughs> this is really difficult. Or one of my favorites, you know, this happens to me often in London. You, you, you're in a shop. You're just browsing. And there's this very eager shop assistant who comes, do you need help? And, and no, I don't need help. Thank you very much. And then you realize you actually do need help. <laughs> oh, how awkward is that? You have to go back to them. Oh my God. So being Finnish, having my unique Finnish nightmares, um, this thing about brave, it is, it's actually quite difficult. So thinking about it, actually, how do we define bravery? Merriam-Webster has a very sort of serious definition of bravery, talking about being resolute in facing the odds and, <coughs> and persisting with things despite the fear. And fear is really the thing that can be very, very paralyzing, especially because we feed fear with our imagination. We're very good at thinking about things like, oh, my goodness, you know, what will they say? What will they think? Gosh, and as we do that, we make the fear bigger. And, you know, I like to think about this whole thing about bravery. It's almost like an equation. You have fear on one side, then you have bravery on the other side. If the fear is very big, and granted, you need to have very big bravery on the other side to cancel it out. But if you can figure out how to make the fear smaller, maybe you can be brave more often. I'd like to think that that's possible. Now, let's take a lesson from children. So I work at Lego, and children are our role models. And children are brave through play. What do I mean? Well, think about it. When you're born, you can't talk, you can't walk. There are all these beings who hover around you all the time. You need food, you need to do all sorts of things, but you're just struggling to con communicate. Somehow, children just throw themselves into learning, exploring the world through play. And by doing so, they're actually developing some incredible skills. <coughs> Social, <coughs> cognitive, creative, emotional, physical skills all through play. But interestingly, when we play, we also enter a state of flow. And flow is really important because when you're in flow, you lose the sense of time, you just get engrossed in what you're doing, and you, most importantly, you lose that self-consciousness that can just make you really afraid. You basically forget being afraid when you're playing. And that's a really useful thing because you take it a bit further and you think about experimentation. Children are actually doing a lot of this all the time because through playing and approaching things with a playful mindset, they're trying stuff out. They play being someone else, being in a new situation, doing something dangerous. They're just basically trying stuff out. And they're doing it through play. But I think, why don't we as adults, why don't we do the same? You know, why do we 
oh, why, have to be, why do we have to be so serious all the time? And you have to do everything the first time and we have to do it perfectly. But what if, you know, maybe I'm just playing doing a conference talk right now. I tell you, that's way less scary than actually doing a conference talk. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm playing and I'm, I'm experimenting. But it's interesting how much more it unlocks in me this idea of play and possibility rather than thinking I have to get it right the first time and I have to do it perfectly. Then there is this thing about kind of finding your why. This thing about, you know, sometimes I wonder whether, you know, we could approach fear a bit like how magic works. So think about magicians. They're extremely good at focusing your attention over here. And while you're busy looking at that, they're changing something over there. And next thing you know, something's disappeared. You think it's magic. Actually, all they've done is to shift your attention from essentially what they were changing to something they want you to look at just then. But knowing that, maybe we can do that to ourselves and say, OK, if we deliberately focus on something that we find meaningful or valuable or interesting and we just engross ourselves in that, maybe we can just forget for a second about the fear. Again, what is that why that really resonates with you? That makes you go, ah, oh, but this is so fascinating. I just have to find out what it is. And, you know, you just forget about all that other stuff because you just you know, curious in finding out, you know, what this is. So again, finding that why actually can again empower you. Um, and more importantly, when it is something bigger than you, so the why, you're not doing it because of you, but it might be because of your loved ones, like Christine was talking about, your friends, your family, people you care about, something you care about, essentially something outside of yourself, it really transports you to much more productive space. And that actually brings me to this idea about what is the difference between courage and bravery. Yeah, yes, <laughs> you can uh, have to be very courageous to do that, especially when Darth Vader is watching that telly. But this is the thing, um, because if bravery is this thing about getting started, how do you start? Then I would argue that courage is actually the persistence to carry on and finish the job. So if bravery gets your start, you started, courage you know, makes you finish the job, going into the long haul. And courage really works around this idea of some doing it for something bigger than you, something much more persistent, something more long-term. Now, all of those things, putting it in a context of a company, how can we use these things to think about what does it mean to be a company that is brave? We've talked about how play can liberate us, experiment with different ways of thinking, and then how finding our personal why, how that can allow us to be more brave. I do believe that works for a company too, those same things. But moreover, companies don't just wake up one morning and sort of decide to play or decide to be courageous and have a why, all sorts of things. You know, companies are collections of people and those people, you know, and what companies do, they are a series of moments. Some moments are very strong, they're very, you know, we're success, we have Christmas, Lego is just a big thing for us every year, Christmas, and there is, you know, certain milestones all the way throughout the year. However, every now and then, there's a crisis. And you might have heard that Lego also had a very serious crisis uh, back in the early noughties. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that because I want you to remember that we all, you know, physically detest the idea of having a crisis. Companies even more so. We try to do everything to avoid having a crisis. But crises are also moments for reinvention for realizing that it's time, now is the time, now is the moment that if you don't get going now, you have to really stop doing what you're doing. It is the moment to use wisely. And as the Chinese characters for, for a crisis is, you know, danger and opportunity. 
thinking about that opportunity. And in our case, early noughties, we were staring down the cliff. Uh, lots of opportunities to reinvent ourselves, create new uh, ideas and things around the Lego brand actually hadn't worked. There was a young strategy advisor. He had to go to the board with a very serious message. And he had to say, guys, we have 30 product lines. It's 2003, so we have 30 product lines. Only three of them made any money this year. Guess what? Two of them were supported by big films. One was Star Wars. One was Harry Potter, and guess what? Next year, there are no big films. Bankruptcy is what awaits us. The board listened to this. They took a deep breath. I probably could hear the sigh now if I'd listened hard enough. And they fired the co that CEO that was uh, working at that time. They fired him on the spot. And they offered the job to this young strategy advisor. He accepted. He was 36, he had never run a company before. He hadn't even run a big team before, actually. He was a strategy advisor. His name is Jörn V. Knutstop, and he became our CEO for the next 12 years. He is now our chairman. Interestingly, he did what you know, consultants do, which is a lot of sensible things about taking away all the things that didn't work, slimming down the company. But he realized one very important thing. What got us to that point wasn't going to, was going to get us out of it. We really had to rethink everything. And that de demanded us to do something very different. And for him, it was going to see our customers, our retailers, Lego consumers, so children, parents, educators, employees, Lego fans, and every single person he met, he always asked the same question. What would you miss if we were no longer here? And guess what? None of them said, oh, we'd miss the parks and the video games and the watches and the clothing and the, and the sort of books and things that you do. None of them talked about that. All the things that we had been trying to do that didn't work. But all of them spoke about one thing the Lego idea. This weird type of systematic creativity where you combine this sort of logic and reasoning with creativity and imagination into a system that you don't have to know every piece to get started. You just start building and the ideas come. And guess what? You can make anything you imagine from it. And best of all, you can share it with others. And when doing so, sharing your idea with someone else, having made it physical, that act actually changes how you think about the idea and you get another idea. So you actually evolve as a human being. Your thinking evolves and you're actually looking at how you evolve your human potential. This exercise of going around and asking everyone, what would you miss if we were no longer here, was exactly what allowed us to really sharpen and understand our purpose. We are not here for us. We are here to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. And those promises, and that promise, we also looked into our planet, our people, partner, and play promise and honed those further to really remember why it is and what is the value we bring to the world and then connect it to the commercial logic, which means that 25% of all the profits we make every year go into the Lego Foundation, which we then spend on um, investing in research on cre play, creativity and learning, and also in bringing play to underserved communities around the world. And also into other things like last year where we became 100% powered by renewable energy as a company. But again, it gives us a purpose for being and when you have that, it's incredibly contagious because not only does it unlock incredible energy in employees, they become creative, passionate, inspired to do their very best to help you along the way. Your consumers, your fans, they join you because they sense your, this is a movement that they want to be part of. Even your partners, they want to be, they, they love what you stand for and they want to be part of the success that you're creating. And the planet wins too, 
because how can you, how can we be for inspiring and developing the builders of tomorrow if we don't do the very best we can to make sure that there is a planet for children to inherit tomorrow. So purpose is incredibly liberating. It's hard to get to, but the crises are actually moments to discover those purposes. And for us, one thing to be aware of is that because it can unleash so much success, and in our case, we grew by double digits every year from 2005 to 2016, that its success is addictive. And when you have that much amount of success, what the danger is, is actually the complacency. Because you just bet a little bit more on the things that worked well last year because you're so afraid that your luck is going to run out. And in our case, we were fortunate enough not to stare down another cliff, but our growth slowed very briefly last year, only to single digits. But at that time, for most people in the company, they had never seen anything but at least 20% growth year on year. So that is terrifying. <laughs> Nonetheless, but a great reminder for us to say, okay, let's re-remember why we are here and what we can do. And that was one of these things, bringing out Lego plants made from sustainable, sustainably sourced sugarcane. Part of a bigger vision of ours to uh, change the material we make, from, uh, make Lego bricks from to a sustainable material and do that for all of our products by 2030. The trouble was, we were going to bring this out. We had just made the decision to do it when Blue Planet launched. And suddenly, plastic was the number one public enemy all over the world. And the really scary thing is that our consumers don't think of Lego as made out of plastic. This is something I've learned, which is because there's something Lego is something you hold on to. You pass it to your grandchildren, you might sell it on eBay, but you don't throw it away because it's valuable. And if that is the insight, that people don't see Lego as plastic, why would you even bother going through the hassle of trying to replace the material you're using to something else? But it is the right thing to do. Back to our mission, why are we here? To inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow and making sure there is a tomorrow. That means we have to take the hard, hard road and not the easy road. So we get, went ahead with this anyway, and it helped us to be and have such a strong purpose and to persist even in the internal debate and say, you know what, it is the right thing to do. And guess what, it's the worst time to sort of leap into this debate about single-use plastic as a you know, big manufacturer of plastic. But now is probably the best time as ever because change does need to happen. Everyone needs to be with us on the journey. And that means that if we can also inspire other companies to do the same, to make some of these hard decisions now and not later, then we are definitely doing the right thing. So I wrap this up with the idea of how you free your courage. Because one is, we can make fear smaller by playing, by experimenting, by finding our why. We can also make our bravery bigger. And that's by the more we know, the more we dare. So taking that non-linear career path, experimenting, doing things, not because everyone else does it or it's the right thing to do, but it's because something that is interesting and curious to you. The other one is to free your curiosity. Because when you're curious, you're less defensive, you're less aggressive, you're nicer to be around, but crucially, you're more creative when you face a difficult situation. And lastly, it is taking a step, even the small one. Think big, yes, act quickly, and do it, do it fast. That's because the more you do, then you learn by doing, you can adapt and change the things that don't work, and crucially, you get out of your head, and maybe you're into playing. Playing, because that's what frees your creativity. Thank you. <laughs>